Hello, today I'm going to be talking about how to scout for donors. It's a very exciting topic because it's just like sales in a for-profit organization. If you want to get clients as a consultant, if you want to get customers as a business, you have to attract donors as a non-profit. Like I said before, in one of my um, previous videos on fundraising, there's restricted and unrestricted funding. This is in line with restricted funding in a way, but if you're going with individuals, it's non-restricted funding, okay? So the first thing you need to do as you're scouting for donors is to make sure that you're communicating your work. So initially, as an NGO startup, you may want to spend your own money on your organization, but you need to communicate your work. You need to be tra financially transparent in the way you're spending your money because you are the first donor, okay? So what you need to do is make sure that you're in a position to give an account of how monies have been spent. The first thing you need to do as you're scouting for donors, besides communicating your work, is to research your donor. Okay, so if you have a list of donors that are in line with your target demographic, you need to then research them. You need to review their report. You need to review their strategic plan, okay? So you research your donor, right? So international bilateral agencies like USAID and DFID, they deal with various sectors. So if you're into agriculture, you need to research what DFID's priorities on agriculture is. Is it agriculture crop production? Is it processing? Is it exportation? What is their target priority in that specific sector? Okay, so for Ford Foundation, if you're a media company and you want them to fund one of your projects, you need to look at what kind of projects are they funding? What kind of projects are they looking at that your, you as a media organization are currently doing or are currently passionate about, okay? So you need to be able to conduct an independent assessment of your organization. So you need to assess the current resources that you have, okay? So if you have the right human resources to implement a certain project, make sure you highlight that in your proposal. Make sure you highlight that while you're talking to your donor. So you assess the resources. If you are able to reach out to 10,000 youth and you have the current resources to do that, make sure you highlight that and make sure you're able to deliver. Do not overpromise and underdeliver. It, it creates bad um, juju. I, I, I know that's kind of like a, a thing that I'm saying. You're creating bad juju because if you do not um, deliver to one donor, they talk to each other and then you end up not being able to fundraise strategically, okay? The next thing you need to do is go to networking events, okay? So, for example, in Nigeria, there are various mailing lists that you need to be on, okay? For example, you have the Civil Society Situation Room, you have Yaga Africa, you have um, the National Democratic Institute, you have various organizations, you have um, organizations that are dealing with your target demographic. Ensure you, you, you are in their mailing list. If they are having free events that you can attend, attend those events because sometimes those events are funded by certain donors and they will attend the event. You can have a conversation with them about what you are doing specifically. Okay? For example, the Acquire, the Acquire Coronation Trust, they have an annual breakfast. If you want to be funded by the Acquire Coronation Trust Foundation, go to their annual breakfast. They had one in 2019. You go to the one in 2020 so that you can liaise with some members of their team. Ford Foundation, they have various dialogues by various uh, organizations. Make sure you attend. Let them see you so that you can have conversations with them about your organization and about your projects. And because you're being visible and you're on social media, I assume, you'll be able to link them to your website, your Facebook, your Instagram page, and your Twitter feed and LinkedIn. So you're able to communicate your work, okay? Now, 
you've communicated with the donor, you've wooed the donor, if you're, if, you know, so you're like a man trying to woo a woman, so you've wooed her, now you're bringing her on for a first date, you're trying to convince her to go out with you, right? So what you're going to do with this is writing a good proposal. Make sure you write a good proposal. I have uh, another video, which I'm going to link up in the cards, about how to write a good proposal. No, no grammatical errors, no typos, do not um, overpromise and underdeliver. Make sure you write a good proposal. A lot of donors, they don't accept unsolicited, unsolicited proposals. So you have to send in uh, um, a request. Say, hey, this is, I want to write a proposal. You can send a letter of inquiry and say, hey, I want to write a proposal to you all. Can you, can you guys send me an RFP? So if you send in a letter of inquiry, they like what they see, they send you an RFP. Or they talk to each other. Like I said, the donor is a community. They talk to each other and they'll ask, hey, do you know um, X, Y, and Z Foundation? Have, have they done any work for you? Oh, yeah, I know them. Yeah, I think you should work with them. They're pretty good. They write good reports. They send in their reports on time. And they do what they say they're going to do. They're like, okay, great. We'll send them a proposal. There was an event I went to. Um, like it was um, Intel, CSR, uh, She Will Connect. They actually said that they begged Paradigm Initiative Nigeria to come into their project. Said, please take our money and do our project. You want to be in a position as an organization that a donor, that a company will be begging you to do a project for them. They're like, look, I have $40,000 here. Can you spend it? You want to be in that position because you have a value proposition. You are giving them return on impact. So write a good proposal. It's up in the cards. Click on it so that you can get all the juicy de details on how to do that. So, like I said before, conduct an effective program, okay? I have a, another a video on the cards on program design. So make sure you watch that. Make sure you conduct a good program. What you said in the proposal, what you said in your logical framework, what you said in your objectives, what you said in your activities, make sure you conduct it and make sure you do it in those timelines. If there are any issues, make sure you are in communication with your donor like, okay, we wanted to um, work with um, 10,000 girls, but we had some issues in Borno State. They were like um, issues with Boko Haram. Nobody wants to come out because everybody doesn't feel safe. That is an issue. You've explained to them transparently and they will understand and then you can move forward, okay? But make sure everything is done in a timely manner. As anything that is under your control, make sure you got it, okay? So, the next thing is timely reporting. Make sure you, you, you conduct your programs well and, re, and turn in your reports on time. Because the donor that you're working with has a direct report. So if a program officer is assigned to your organization and you don't turn in your, um, your report on time, that program officer is going to have an issue with their direct report. And that will rub your organization the wrong way if you do not turn in your report on time. Make sure your report is, is correctly written. I have another video that I'm going to be working on on how to write a good report. So make sure you watch it. Make sure you subscribe to my, to my channel so that you can get these videos. Make sure you write a good report, no grammatical areas, talk about what you did, have proof of what you did, make sure you have videos, media clippings, and social media posts, hashtags. Make sure you put that down in your report so that they have a clear purview as if they were there in the program that it was done, okay? After writing a, a, a timely report and then you, you, you turned in your final report, you finished your program, and they're happy with you, make sure you follow up. They may have a, a different strategic priority than what you're doing uh, in your organization, but if you continue to follow up with them as you're supposed to, then you can be sustainable because when it comes back to what you're doing again and they go back to that priority, you'll be the first one to call, okay? Like for example, Junior Achievement Nigeria conducted a program with the MasterCard Foundation and they didn't fund the organization anymore, but 
Now the organization is looking into how they can add value in the fourth industrial revolution. And the next thing, they're like, okay, which organization did we partner in in Nigeria? It was Junior Achievement Nigeria. I says, okay, let's have a focus group discussion with them on the fourth industrial revolution. So now that they're doing their research, Junior Achievement Nigeria is gonna be back at the forefront and then they'll be able to fund them on other projects in their next strategic priority. So that's how you work to become a sustainable organization. So these are the seven things that you look at when you want to be sustainable and scout out for donors. If you have any information, if you, if you have any more information you want to add to this, let's hear it in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.